This is the start of the Math 137 final exam review. Once again, in module 16 of the online course, there is a, I think it's called final exam review practice problems. There are 44 problems. That's what I'm going to work through. Now the problems I have printed out may have different numbers than the problems you will work online, but otherwise your problems are exactly the same. And I'm just going to warn you, I'm going to try and work through these fairly quickly because almost everything, all the problems in this review, I have made videos giving detail of explaining how to do these problems and the principles behind them. So this really should be a review. <clears throat> so I plan to go through these pretty quickly. I'll try and go through as many problems as I can and maybe like a 20 to 30 minute time spent then I'll stop and do another video. By the way, while I'm thinking about it, I brought along, this is the formula sheet that you will have access to for the exam. Starts out with the law of sines, law of cosines, then it has information to help you with polar and rectangular coordinates. And then the section about looking at complex numbers written both with rectangular and polar coordinates. Here, in terms of vectors, this is the equation to find the angle between two vectors. Remember, this is the dot product a dot product B. And then finally, the last section of the class where we dealt with really more geometry, parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas. And each one of these have two equations according to which kind you have. So this is the formula sheet. It's already on Ivy Learn, so you can look at it and use it. All right, so let's just dive right in. Like I said, I hope to work through these fairly quickly. And please, when you take your test, pay attention to the instructions in terms of number of units and other instructions. It's like number one is a right triangle. And they say side A is 10, which is down here. And they say angle B is 64 degrees, which is right here. And they want me to find side B, side C is hypotenuse, and angle A. Okay, this is a right triangle. Therefore, we can use trig functions for right triangles. Sine, cosine, tangent, so katoa. Let's start out, let's just say we want to find side B. Here's an angle. This side, length of 10, would be considered adjacent. B would be opposite. So I can write tangent of 64 degrees, so-called TOA. Right, so B would be 10 times tangent of 64 degrees. And then the problem that says round to the nearest hundredth. So grab your calculator, make sure you're in degree mode, 64 tangent times 10. And round to 100 should be 20.50. Now, um, actually, angle A is pretty easy. I could have done that first of all. Why is that? Since it's a right triangle, I know this is 90 degrees, this is 64. Three triangles always add up to be 180, right? 64 degrees plus 90 degrees plus angle A. So if I take 180 minus 64 minus 90, 
I could do this in my head, but I don't want to mess up on this video, so I'll use my calculator. Angle A is 26 degrees. Now the last thing is the hypotenuse. I could use a trig function, or I could use Pythagorean formula. Let's use Pythagorean formula just as a change up. Well, let me just, I'll, let's just use a trig function. I probably should. Let's go ahead and use the angle 64, this side, and this. So this is adjacent. This is hypotenuse. So ka, right, cosine. So ka adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I do some algebra here, C is going to actually be 10 over cosine of 64 degrees. So twenty two point eight one. Okay, those three are the correct answers. Now number two, I'm actually not going to do this, I don't believe. I'm just gonna talk about it because it's really almost identical to number one. Number two says the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Let's go and draw a right triangle again. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is 11 inches. So it's 11 inches. If one leg is nine inches, find the degree measure of each angle. So basically, I need to find this and this. We want to, just for fun, we'll call this A and B. I'm not going to do the math, but let's talk about this. If I'm looking for angle A, what do I know? I would know the adjacent and hypotenuse. Well, let's just go ahead and do this. So, ka. So, 9. Now be careful, don't round this off too much. Maybe I'll run it out to like four digits, 0 0.8181, or actually five digits. So how do I solve for A? Cosine A equals this, so what's A going to be? the inverse cosine so go to calculator inverse cosine now we have special rules about inverse trig functions but in this case that says round to one decimal place 35.1 degree and that would be correct and for B, since B is this angle, this would be opposite hypotenuse. All right. So it's interesting how this is going to be the same thing, but when you take the inverse sine of 54.9 degrees. All right, I did it after all just because in this case we actually had to use inverse trig functions. All right, let's keep going. Number three. Solve the triangle shown to the left. And here's the triangle. Looks like I call this angle C. They call this angle A. So this must be side A. Side B, angle B. 
So basically, six parts to a triangle, they've given us two angles and a side, two angles and a side, and what's left, whoops, side B, side C, angle A. All right, so what is this? Two angles and a side. If you remember, law of sines and cosines, anytime you have two angles and a side, law of sines is very straightforward. What's the first thing you do? We can figure out this third angle very easily. Because the three angles of a triangle have to equal 180 degrees. So if we solve this equation for A, so 180 minus 38 minus 54. Looks like angle A is 88 degrees. <clears throat> now to find these sides, let's go ahead and Let's use angle A, side A, to find side B. So here's the law of sines. Let me write it out. Sine A over A equals sine B over B. And I know three of these. I know since A is 88 degrees, sine of 88 degrees the length of A is 15. Sine of B, B is 54 degrees. So I can solve this equation for small b. Matter of fact, it would be, if I do the algebra, 15 times sine of 54 degrees over Sine of 88 degrees. And it says round your answer to two decimal places. Like it's 12.14. Now the last thing left is side C, so if I use the law of sines again, sine C over side C, I'll just use A again. I could use either sine A over A or sine B over B, it doesn't matter which. So sine C, over C, which I don't know yet, equals sine of A. We just figured out A was 88 degrees over side A, which is 15. If we solve for C, 15 times sine of 38 degrees Sine of 88 degrees. So this one, 38 degrees sine divided by 88 degrees sine equals times 15. It's like 9.24. So we found all three of those. So this is the easy one angle, angle, sine. Right away, you can find the third angle and then use the law, law of sines to find the rest of the sides. Problem number four. It's like another triangle problem. Now this one, it just doesn't have a picture, it just give you, gives you words. 
Two sides and an angle are given below. Determine whether the given information results in one triangle, two triangles, or no triangle at all. Solve any triangles. So they tell us side A is 10, side B is 3, and angle A. Now I usually just go ahead and draw a picture even though this picture, of course, isn't quite correct in terms of being to scale, but so if I call this angle A, and that's side A, if I call this side B, this is angle B, and there's C and C. So here, if you look back, my lectures and I explained this, we have two sides and an angle, and I call these, this is just the way I taught it, I call this matching because one of your sides, A, matches up with one of your angles, big A. So when you do this, we're going to use the law of signs. But the possibility exists for two, I should have said, triangles. This is the case where you might have, actually, just like the question says, the question sort of gives you a clue. You could have no, no triangles, one triangle, or two triangles. So the first thing you do is you solve for the first triangle, and if you get a triangle, then you go see if there's a second triangle. So, first triangle. Going to use the law of sines. We know we have A, so sine A over little a, and we have side B, so we're going to use the A's and the B's. I can fill in what I know since A is 60 degrees and side A is 10. I don't know angle B, but I do know side B is 3. So in this case, I can solve for sine B, which means eventually I can get angle B. So if I do a little algebra, sine B is going to be 3 tenths times the sine of 60 degrees. So 60 degrees sine times 3 divided by 10. Once again, be careful not to round off too soon. I'm going to call this point 0.25. Nine, eight. Now, to get angle B, what do I do? I take the inverse sine of both sides of the equation. And in this case, it says round to two decimal places. So 15.06 degrees. So now that I know B, let's go ahead and find C, because now I know two angles of my triangle, I can find C. Although, you know what I'm going to do? When I go work on my second triangle, I have to use this information. The first angle you find is what I'm going to have to use when I start working on my second triangle. So I'm going to sort of put this in a square because I'm going to come back and have to use this. So let's go figure out angle C. Well, I know the three angles of a triangle equal 180. So 60 degrees was, and I just found B to be 15.06 degrees. The one thing I have left is angle C. So it's a pretty simple 180. Subtract 60, 
subtract 15.06, 104.94 degrees. So there's angle C. Now what I have left, or I think I don't know, is side C. So in this case, I can use law of sines. Actually, with anything I want, I'll just use it for A. Sine A over little a. Sine C over little c. A is 60 degrees, so sine of 60 degrees. Side A is 10. I know angle C is 104.94 degrees over side C. So side C, doing some algebra, is going to be 10 times sine 104.94 sine 60 degrees. So grab your calculator. And I get side C is 11.16. So that's my first triangle. Now, this is the kind of problem, once again, since it was two sides and an angle, and what I call matching, this is where we could have a second triangle. So now, we're going to see if there's a second triangle. And what we do is, the very first angle I calculated for the first triangle, and that's why I put this in this square, I'm going to use this. Because what I'm going to do is, for my first triangle, this is angle B. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to come up with a second possible angle B. And how do I calculate this? the angle B of this second possible triangle? I'm going to call it B prime because all you do is you take 180 degrees and you subtract angle B of your first triangle. And that's why I put this on a square because now I have to go back and use this. Here's what we're going to say. If we have a second triangle, this is going to be the angle B of the second triangle. Now at this point, I don't know whether I do or not. As a matter of fact, for the second triangle, Angle A, this original information, this is all true of my second triangle. So I know angle A for both triangles 60 degrees. Now what I've done is, for the second triangle, I've decided, or I've figured out that if this second triangle exists, here's my angle B. So I should write here, I know angle A is still 60 degrees, so let's figure out for the second triangle, what angle C would be. And once again, I'll put a little C prime because this reminds me that this is C of my second triangle. Well, I know angle A is 60 degrees. I know angle B is this. So once again, well, just to make it very clear, the three angles of a triangle have to go on 80 degrees. So, angle A is 60 degrees. My new angle B is 164.94 degrees. And I'm going to calculate my new angle C. So, pretty straightforward. 180 minus 60 minus 164.94. Negative 44.94 degrees. All right. That's sort of interesting. This is saying 
For my second triangle, angle C would be negative 44.94. Well, you know what? We can't have, we don't have negative angles. We don't have angles that measure as a negative number. So this means there's no second triangle. So in this case, all you have is your first triangle. All right, I think I have a couple more triangle problems, starting with number five. Looks like this video is about 25 minutes. Let me just stop this, and we'll go ahead and start a new video.